Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chris Gray. I'm the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Workforce Development at McHenry County College. I want to have a very brief conversation with you to talk about an Associate of Arts and an Associate of Science, and I hope to answer today, what's the big difference? Spoiler alert, you're going to find out the answer is not much. Before we dig into the recipe for an Associate of Arts degree, let's talk about how an Associate's degree was originally thought of in, in, within a four-year college degree. So high school does a great job of building upon the breadth of knowledge on lots of different subject matters. Your first two years of college typically does that same thing. So you expand knowledge in lots of different subject matters and you gain a more worldly understanding. And then as you start to become a major and upperclassman, a junior or senior, you start to focus that knowledge a little bit and push a little bit of depth into any one of those particular disciplines. All right, so understand that was the traditional model, and that's where the associate degree came from. Well, let's talk now about the associate of arts degree. If I made a recipe for associate of arts degree, I'd put nine parts of communication. We're going to reinforce that written and oral communication that the students have been working on their K-12 experience. We're going to add nine equal parts of humanities and fine arts so we can understand what it means to be a human and how we express ourselves as humans. Um, we're going to add nine parts of social and behavioral sciences so we can understand how humans interact with one another and how humans interact in social structures. Um, and then we're going to add seven parts of life in physical science. We want to continually push that mode of inquiry and that scientific method. Um, that is the basis of all education, so we want to continue to push that. And then finally, we know quantitative literacy continues to be a challenge for our students, but we think it's important, so we want to still make sure they're taking some courses in mathematics and understand the spatial relationships of all the knowledge. All right. So that's your dry ingredients on the Associate of Arts. That's what we call the distribution requirement. But down here, they also have its 60 total hours. So they have 23 hours where they can explore, or if they know their major, they can start taking courses towards their major. But now, what's the big difference between that and the Associate of Science? Can we put an echo effect in there? Associate of Science, Science, Science. All right, again, I told you the spoiler already, there's not a lot. Communication stays the same. Humanities and Fine Arts, we take one class off. Social and Behavior Sciences, we take one class off. Life and Physical Science, we add one lab science, four credit hour course, and in math, we add one class. So the whole difference here is we switch two classes out of this dry ingredient, we flip it up there to two classes. They still have, this adds up to 38 hours now because of that lab science, they still have 22 hours of exploration. So the reality is it's not much different. So why then do we have an Associate of Science degree? Well, in some of the STEM fields, that traditional model I talked about where you explore in your first year and then focus in your junior and senior year, in some of those STEM fields that's flipped. You need to get Calc 1, Calc 2, trigonometry. You need um, a series of physics courses, a series of chemistry courses that are sequential. So you must take course one before you can get to course two. So it takes time. And so in some of those fields, they flip that. So you get that base understanding your freshman and sophomore year, and then you can do the theory. As a result of that, sometimes in some of those STEM fields, we push gen ed out of a little bit of gen ed, out of freshman, sophomore year, and into the junior and senior year. But it's only a little bit. Now the reality is, outside of academia, a Bachelor of Arts versus a Bachelor of Science doesn't make a difference, right? I'll tell you, I have a Master's of Arts degree in theater. There were six of us in our cohort or five of us in our cohort. I was the only one to graduate with a Master of Arts degree within theater. Theater certainly within the arts realm. All of my peers graduated with a Master of Science degree. Why? The coursework was the same. The only difference was I happened to have a foreign language competency that they chose not to do. All right. Also, I looked down at our flagship institution, Illinois University of, of uh, Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. They now call their bachelor, it's a BSLA, a Bachelor of Science in Liberal Arts. So all of us in college are struggling with this difference. So the reality is, as you're talking to students, a bachelor, uh, an, uh, an arts degree versus a science degree, really, if you get that completed degree, that's what people are looking for. So thanks for uh, sharing a little of your time with me, and I hope I've made a little bit of sense of this recipe of the Associate of Arts degree and the Associate of Science. Thank you.